Hi everybody, it's Dr. Hudgens. I have graded your practicum logs as well as your technology papers today and have given you feedback. Um, in general, the practicum logs went really, really well. Um, you all did a great job correcting the errors in your time log and have co created um, practicum logs that really have a lot of good detail. I want to remind you that as you begin to wrap up um, the logs for this course, that you need to be thinking um, always about your plans from your goals and objectives. And be very intentional when you go into the practicum setting of having a plan for the time that you're spending with your preceptor. And I'm going to remind you that your time with your preceptor needs to be one-on-one, -on -one, that you need to always be supervised outside of your goals and objective time that you did with me, um, as well as any time that you have used for approved conferences or approved research time. And all of the conferences and research time has to be approved by your um, course faculty member before you can actually use it to count towards hours. And um, you have to look at your MSN handbook to find the, the details on that as well as the limit in the number of hours you can use. So just be intentional folks. As you begin to anticipate doing log three, it's going to be important that you notice um, any errors that you've made, especially tracking your time, and correct those before you move forward. Uh, incomplete time logs or incomplete practicum logs will result in you not getting a post-it grade for your course until those logs are completed. So begin to kind of anticipate that. Um, your technology papers are so much fun for me to read, um, partly because I like thinking about uh, or learning about new technologies to see if you know you guys have had any ideas or uh, interesting ideas on how to use existing technology. Your classmate Deborah gets the award for the only person that put a technology that was new, um, that wasn't on our list and was really cool. She um, gave some details about the class dojo, which is um, a classroom community that can be set up to to help group learners together and share information with them. So I'm going to put that in as a link on this announcement for you to look at. Um, but I thought it was pretty cool that Deborah found that. And it's an interesting way to look at how we can organize information and um, students together to share information. The other um, really cool thing, your classmate um, Patty linked um, to a TED talk that she had watched that was about technology. So I went on a bunny trail um, looking for that that TED talk and found um, details of one of the um, transcripts. The author of this TED talk, let me see if I can flip back and find it. Okay. Um, the author said, using technology simply for the sake of using it is wasteful. If tech doesn't transform your classroom, your teaching or your students learning, skip it. One easy rule of thumb, if a project can be done using paper or pencil, but you're doing it on the computer or device, it's not transforming your classroom. I thought that was really insightful. And it's one of the things I want you to be thinking about is you begin to think about how you're going to use um, technology in your practice as a nurse educator. It's great that we find new and shiny things and we're, we're excited about innovation, but we need to be very thoughtful about how we implement technology with our students, whether they're um, hospital-based or whether they're in the classroom, that we are thinking very thoughtfully about is this technology meaningful? Is it improving how the, the learner um, is understanding material, how they're, how they're managing it, how they're manipulating it? Is it really moving the needle forward or, or, or moving um, the idea more broadly? So we don't want to use new and shiny things just because they're new and shiny and we think it's fun. It's unkind to do that to your learners for a variety of reasons, but primarily it's unnecessary. Um, learning is hard enough when you don't know the things you don't know. Um, so be very thoughtful when you think, okay, maybe I'll, I'll try this technology in the classroom and it will help do this. Um, just have a plan and always be thinking about what the student's perception is going to be. It is okay to push students outside their comfort zone and make them um, challenge themselves to do things that are new and different as long as it's meaningful um, and as long as it, it has um, intentional growth opportunities for them. So I do want you to be thoughtful about that and I appreciate um, this TED Talks uh, insight in sharing you know how important it is that we really are being innovative. For next week, uh, week seven, you have your second teaching plan, and this teaching plan is about service learning. And I want to remind you that you are always teaching 
a professional nurse or a professional student. Remember several weeks ago we talked about um, the nurse educator little n little e versus the nurse educator big n big e. Um, our, our bachelor's prepared or undergraduate prepared nurses are always functioning in the nurse educator role little n little e. Every nurse educates, every nurse is at the bedside or with team members sharing information broadening um, insights. Nurse Educator, capital N, capital E, has a graduate level preparation and is sharing information and knowledge at a graduate level. And our audience is most often going to be a professional group of nurses or nursing students. So when you think about your service learning project, I want to remind you that your learners are one of those two populations and that the service project that you're going to be um, expanding on is going to be based on some kind of content that you share with your learners. So let me give you an example. I think I sent this in an email recently. Um, let's say you are teaching a pediatric class to undergraduate students and you have covered um, pediatric safety risks and you've talked about national data of injury and harm and head injury um, and so you've had this this lecture with your with your um, with your undergraduate students. The service learning component of that teaching plan is you'd outline your teaching content, you'd, you'd provide a PowerPoint delineating patient um, pediatric safety issues and what that looked like and how you'd be teaching them. And the product or the active learning component of your teaching plan is to have your nursing students develop um, a flyer or um, posters for a safety fair at a local um, community elementary school. So you would have the education piece to your learners that are the nursing students and the community service piece that grows out of that knowledge is the application of that information related to pediatric safety and the application of the service learning piece is applied in the community elementary school to those students. So it's, it's the, the concept of first um, making sure that your um, that your hands and feet have proper information so we're educating them and then we're serving people in an educational capacity within our community. I realize this feels a little wonky but the reason I want you to do this is to understand that we are very much doing a, a, a higher percentage of teaching while we're in community-based settings. So we are teaching our um, undergraduate nursing students how to do proper vital signs and then we're taking them on mission trips and we're putting them um, in uh, um, assessment labs so that they can do vital signs on um, elderly patients that are coming in into the mission clinics. That's an example of teaching so that they can then be um, in the mission field. Um, so I do want you to be thoughtful about that. Read the material that you've been provided about service learning so that you really understand this topic before you begin your teaching plan. I want to remind you before you write your teaching plan, go back and read the feedback that has been provided to you in your general teaching plan. If there were elements that were missing, make sure you add that to week seven so that you don't um, repeat the same error and, and wind up with, with a similar grade. Your goal is to always improve. Um, have fun with this. And, and again, the idea is a, is a you know 15 minute um, topic, do something simple. This, this is not a deep dive on, on changing the world through service learning. It's making sure you understand the topic and then that you can craft a well-developed teaching plan. Remember the teaching plan is the tool in your toolbox and this is another opportunity to really intentionally plan how would you make this work with the topic of service learning. So I want you to be very thoughtful about that. Um, let me see if I have anything else. Nope, I think that's it. Um, it is July 4th week, so I, I am staying put. I have a, um, my niece is getting married this coming Saturday, so I'll be going um, to the Tidewater area to, to celebrate with my family, but I am not falling off the grid. Just know that um, I may be a little bit slower getting back to you, especially on Saturday when the we're, we're having the wedding. It is July 4th on Wednesday. Um, I absolutely love the July 4th, but uh, my puppies are not fans of loud noises. So invariably, we skip the fireworks and huddle in the basement, hiding from all the loud banging. Um, as you can tell from behind me, there is absolutely no pre-fireworks going on because they are snoring. Um, so I will be around July 4th. I'm not going to be um, doing a whole lot of grading, but just know that if you have questions or concerns or for some reason you're using that day as a catch-up, I have not fallen off the grid. I'll be around. Know that I'm thinking about you and I'm praying for you. I know 
you are wary. Uh, we are so close to being done. You know, we're in week seven. We got week eight, and then we're done. Um, touch base and let me know how you are. If you have questions or concerns, remember to use the Ask the Professor link um, for the logistics, the who, what, where, when, how kinds of things, um, especially as we wrap up the course. Anything personal to your grade or your own experience, send me an email. Um, know that I'm thinking about you and I'm here. I hope you guys have a great um, week that you safely enjoy the fourth and that you are um, you're able to catch your breath at some point this week. Take care, y'all.